Hi guys! Today we have another Kickstarter 3D printer unboxing and first analysis video. This time it's the WeDo X40. It's an IDEX machine and it's equipped with many interesting features. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hey you guys, this is Rui, welcome back! But before we start, please don't forget to give a like on this video and subscribe our channel. Also, if you like our work and want to help out, you can join our Patreon page. So, in this video, we have this big box to open. In it, we have the brand new Widow X40. This machine will be launched on Kickstarter very soon, and we have one of the first units to test. This machine is announced to have a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 mm and includes features such as dual independent extruders, a camera for remote viewing, model preview, filament runout sensor, a leveling sensor, silent drivers, and automatic shutdown once the print is complete. As usual, Review machines that are sent to test while the Kickstarter campaign is still running might not be exactly the same as the final ones that will be sent to the customers. This is because the manufacturer can implement improvements or changes to the machine until the final release date. Hi guys, I'm Sandra. Before you can check the printer, let's first unbox everything. And inside the box we can find some papers with instructions, the print surface, and the bottom half of the printer. Stuck under the print heads are two boxes that contain filament spools. Then we have the top half of the printer. And finally this small box. Lost inside the package we found this small metal brush. It was probably broken during packing or shipping. The packaging definitely needs to be improved for the released machines. Inside the box we have the spool holder pieces, the USB cable, the power cord, a spatula, a bag with tools, some screws, an Xato knife, a glue stick, and some metal pieces. The metal pieces are these brackets that will help reinforce the structure. And these are the spool holder parts. Inside the bag with tools we have the camera. This is announced as a 2 megapixel camera. The packing of the camera also needs to be improved because the tools that are in the same bag can hit and scratch the lenses. Next, we have a memory card, a memory card reader, an end stop some allen keys and a couple of wrenches. Inside the two boxes we have a spool of white filament and a spool of red filament. And this is the print surface. 
It's a 1mm thick metal sheet with a print surface on one of the sides. Although it's metal, it's not secured with magnets, but Rui will cover that in a few minutes. Together with the machine are these papers with some instructions. However, the manufacturer has much more information in their website, such as instructions, videos, firmware, etc. And this is the bottom half of the printer. For the Y-axis, we have these two profiles installed far apart from each other to provide better stability. The leveling knobs on this printer are a bit small, but we will check later if this will be an issue or not. At the right side, we have the USB connector and the memory card reader. And here at the right edge is where the camera will be installed. At the left side, we have the main power connector and a sticker with some information. At the front, we have the on and off button and the 4.3 inch touch display. At the corner, we have a couple of more stickers. The front panel and display are in an angle that allows easy access. The heat bed is made from a 3mm thick aluminum plate. For the connections, the manufacturer used this thick ribbon cables with latch connectors. The back feet look a bit fragile, but they are actually strong. As Sandra has mentioned, the print surface is not secured with magnets. Instead, we have these four clamps to secure it. Under the Y carriage, we can see the six wheels, which in our case are filled with grease. And under the heat bed, we can see the insulation foam. To access the electronics, we need to remove this bottom panel. Here we have the board which is equipped with a 32-bit microcontroller and silent drivers. Also on the board, we have the same connectors with latches. The power supply on this one is a 24 volts and 20 amp model. There's also this small board that is responsible to turn off automatically the machine. And next to it, we have the display. At the back of the electronics enclosure, we have access to the main input voltage selector. And this is the top half of the printer. Being an IVEX machine means it has two independent print heads. At the bottom, we have the layer cooling fan and fan duct. The hot end fan in this printer is located inside the print head and behind the layer cooling fan. We are not sure about the performance of hot end cooling mounted this way, but that's something we will have to test later on. The leveling sensor is located on the left print head. At the side, we have this metal brush that will clean the nozzle every time it swaps heads. At the opposite side is the second metal brush that arrived broken, but the manufacturer sent us the STL file to print a new one. Not included in our review machine are the trays to collect the filament remains from the nozzle, but we received the STL files for this as well. On each side, we have an end stop for homing each print head. At the back, we can see the two extruders and next to them the filament runout sensors. On our review unit, many of the parts are 3D printed, but the manufacturer will have many of them replaced with injection molded plastic. Also at the back, we can see the dual Z setup with both lead screws and two stepper motors. To connect the lead screws to the motors, they used rigid couplings. 
At the top, the lead screws are secured with top bearings, and there is no belt at the top connecting the lead screws. All the axes run on wheels except the X axis that runs on a linear rail. On our machine, all the stepper motors have labels on them with the information of torque and rated current. And this is everything that came in the package. In the following video, we will assemble the printer and test it out, so don't miss it. Also, don't forget to check the video description for the links. So, that's it you guys, we will see you next time. Bye!